here in Cuba, at the Center of Molecular Immunology, we developed a vaccine that is trying to target a specific molecule that is overexpressed in cancer cells. When we vaccinate the patients with our vaccine, the patient's immune system is able to see and kill the tumor cells. And as a result, the patients live uh, significantly longer. So when I was a kid, my older brother used to buy old cars and take engines apart and put them back together again. And I think of myself in relation to research kind of in the same way. I like to take cells apart. I like to see how they work. I like to figure out if there's a way to make them function better. My work focuses on the development and function of B cells. B cells are an important arm of the immune system. B cells make antibodies that bind to microorganisms that are infectious in nature and cause disease. By binding to these molecules, they hasten their destruction, and so B cells are involved in protecting us against infectious diseases. As a result of our experience working with these vaccines, we get more and more interested in understanding B cells. For, for many years, we studied papers and articles from Dr. Rostein and his colleagues. Every two years, our institute organized a conference, and I invite Dr. Rostein to come to that conference. In 2008, I received by email an invitation to attend and speak at a conference on immunotherapy, which was being held in Havana, Cuba. At this conference, I met Dr. Ana Maria Hernandez and learned that she ha had actually arranged this invitation for me because of the experience that I had with antibodies and with B cells. And we were co-sharing the B cell session. I had the chance to present our work at that session and he was excited about our results. At that moment, we started talking about science and that's how our collaboration started. Anita and her colleagues have already published the first clinical trial of this vaccine, and it did indeed extend the lives of patients with extensive lung cancer. So they already know that this vaccine can be successful. Now the question is, how can they make it more successful? And that's where we come in. Our group had the opportunity to go to the Feinstein Institute to work once a year, and it has been really, really good to move faster our results. So our collaboration is designed to elucidate which B cells are making antibodies that we might be able to adjust the various components of this vaccine in order to elicit a more intense and hopefully more life-saving response. At some point in our research, we really needed to isolate different populations of B cells because these cells produce a very interesting kind of antibodies. So we really needed to learn how to work with these cells and it has been invaluable with the help of Dr. Nicole Holody. We've really been able to discover a lot of new things together. And we've done that by utilizing a lot of the technology that we have here in the Feinstein Institute that they don't have in Cuba. The cell sorter helps us to separate all of the white blood cells into the different populations of B cells. Within the last year, we've been able to show that B1 cells are the B cell subpopulation that's capable of making antibodies against the cancer cells. This piece of technology has really been essential to answer the questions about this cancer vaccine and how it works, as well as our interest in B1 cells. More recently, our collaboration has enlarged to include Tam Watt, a postdoc in my laboratory, and Nelly rodriguez Zerbenko, a graduate student in Anita's laboratory. Working together, uh, we have been learning so much from one another. It has been very exciting and productive working with the scientists here in New York. If we captured the 100 cells, whether we could do single cell PCR and amplify 
kissing will be try to figure out how to stimulate to them. To target them specifically. What is done is total IgM secret. We can have the cancer patients part of the project split in two to see how B cells and specifically B ones work in cancer patients. So our next step are to look at vaccinated patients. The more we work with patient sample, the more insight we have into how the vaccine works. The cancer vaccine is not currently available in the U.S. So I have traveled to Cuba three times to study patients that have been vaccinated. The results that we have obtained already with this collaboration has really helped us to understand what's going on with the immune system in cancer patients. I really think that we can improve the vaccines we made to make the patients fight the cancer much better. Our colleagues in Cuba are the most wonderful people that you can imagine. Through our work together over the years, we've become friends based on the science that we've shared, but fueled by our mutual respect and regard for each other. The members of Dr. Rosen Lab are one of the best experts in the field of B cells. For me personally, working with Tom and with Nicole has been unbelievable. They are more than colleagues. They are my friends now. I know that I can count on them for anything that I need. And I really feel like I am home each time I'm, I'm going to work there. Cancer, as I think everyone knows, is a widespread and a devastating disease. And we all want the best treatment, the most successful treatment for our family members, our friends, our colleagues, I think we will be able to improve a novel and innovative treatment for cancer and bring benefit to many, many people worldwide.